Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anthony, and today we're going to be discussing configuring a Branch Office VPN. So for starters, we're going to go to VPN, Branch Office VPN, ensure that we're unlocked for editing. You'll see here that we already have an AWS tunnel configured. We're going to go ahead and create a new tunnel for this example. But you'll also notice that the watch guard breaks this down into two sections, the gateway and the tunnel. The gateway primarily being concerned with your external IPs, and the tunnel your internal subnets. In order to create a tunnel, we'll need to select a gateway, so we'll start there. For this example, we're creating a tunnel to our Vegas office. You can see here that you can pick IPv4 or 6. If you have a certificate imported, you can use that. Otherwise, we'll just use a pre-shared key. Then for our gateway, we'll specify a local and remote IP. Go ahead and add one here. Select your interfaces. In this case, we only have one external interface. Then you want to specify your ID, most likely IP address or domain name. Next, we'll provide the information for the remote gateway. We'll say they have a static IP address. And under our advanced tab, you have the option to override the pre-shared key for every specific gateway endpoint, as well as DF and PMTU settings, which in most cases will remain default. You'll also want to note that you can have multiple gateway endpoints for redundancy. So in this case, we can use the same gateway on this side, but have a secondary remote gateway with a dynamic IP address, a domain of vegas.firewalls.com. If we had a secondary local interface, we'd want to do the same for that interface as well. Now we'll want to check on our phase one settings. If at all possible, you want to use Ike v2. As you can see, you'll have to use it on both ends. We'll save our work and create the second half. You can use the same name here. Select our gateway that we just created, and here we'll configure both the local and remote IPs that we want to communicate, generally a network. We want bidirectional traffic, so you can set it to only be local to remote or remote to local. Configure a NAT if needed. And again, you can add additional if you have multiple subnets to share. And you can narrow it down to a range rather than the whole subnet. In this case, we're only allowing the traffic one direction. If you keep this checked, our access rule will be created automatically. Now let's check on our phase two settings. If you're going watch guard firebox to firebox, I'd recommend leaving the defaults. If needed though, you can change proposals for compatibility. You'll want to stay away from all SHA-1, MD5, trip DES, and DES options if you can, as they're all insecure at this point. And finally, we can set our multicast settings if we're using any multicast routing. Now in this case, since we're using Ike v2, we'll also want to go to our Ike v2 shared settings, where again we want to make sure we get rid of anything insecure unless it's absolutely needed for compatibility. Of course you can add options as well. Remembering to avoid MD5 and SHA-1 if possible, as well as DES and trip DES the former being retired and the latter being deprecated on its way to retirement. As always, make sure you save your work. Now we want to come over to Firewall, Firewall Policies. And you'll see our BOVPN policy has been updated with our Vegas Tunnel information. And there you have it. Assuming the other side of the tunnel is configured properly, 
you should be able to communicate with your branch office. Thanks for watching, and as always, we remind you to get secure and stay secure.